Hi, I'm Brett Premack, and I want to welcome you to a special welcome you, excuse me, to a special Facebook Live that we're doing from a uh, rehearsal and recording session with the Tucson Jazz Institute in Tucson, Arizona. And we want to start out here and say hello to the man who's responsible. Hey, don't Doug, blame me. Doug Tideback. What is your name, sir? Doug Tideback. What is the Tucson Jazz Institute? It's an after-school weekend evening program uh, for jazz for students who want to get a little extra music in their lives and uh, take jazz to the next level. And what is the Ellington Band? Our Ellington Band would be considered our top band. It's usually high school students. Uh, and we have a number of big bands, all named after uh, professional band leaders. We have the Ellington Band, the Basie Band, the Chick Webb Band, the Kenton Band, and so on and so forth. Our combos are named after record labels. The Concord Combo, the ECM Combo, the Blue Note Combo. And has the Ellington Band appeared outside of Tucson? Yeah, we play uh, regularly jazz festivals around the country. Uh, the Next Generation Jazz Festival in Monterey, we've played every year for five or six years. We've been involved in the um, essentially Ellington competition at the Lincoln Center, sponsored by Jazz at Lincoln Center and Wynton Marcellus for the last seven years. How long have you been a jazz educator? Uh, the first chance I got to, to lead a band was when I was a, a senior at the University of Illinois. They had uh, ten big bands that year, but they only had two band directors. So they gave uh, a number of graduate students and seniors bands to direct, and uh, that year I directed the third jazz band. You're still doing it. What keeps you going? What keeps you motivated? Um, the music and the students. I mean, it's uh, every every year you get a new batch of students who want to do something a little different. You're trying to find the right music that's going to challenge them and keep them excited about playing uh, and take the band to as close to a professional level as we can. It's always exciting and a challenge. Okay, let's walk around here for a second and meet the band. <clears throat> And we're in the trumpet section. What is your name, sir? Hi, uh, my name's Jack. Jake? Jack. Jack. Yes. How long have you been playing the trumpet? Um, I've been playing the trumpet since fifth grade. Yeah. And why in a jazz band now? Um, I found jazz out like in like seventh grade, I would say, and it's just something I've grown to love, and I continue. I'll continue to do it. Great. Okay. Still in the trumpet section here. Your name, sir? Uh, hi, my name is Alan. Alan, how long have you been playing the horn? Uh, since seventh grade. Seventh grade. The trumpet's a very difficult instrument. What motivates you to practice? Uh, well, being better and like being as good as the people around me, like that keeps me motivated. And how do you feel about jazz? It's something that like never should die away, and it's an art form that should keep, like that represents America and like every art form there is. So like it's it's a very important part of history. So. I really like it. I enjoy playing it. Great. And we're still in the trumpet section here. Your name? Uh, I'm Jerry. Hi, Jerry. And uh, why do you play the trumpet? Because uh, I think it's definitely my favorite instrument. Like, uh, you can really do a lot with the trumpet that you can't do with other instruments. And what is it like playing in a trumpet section? Um, we've got a lot of pressure to, to do well. Uh, but it's, it's really fun. Like, I got to know these people. Uh, they're all my friends, for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. And your name? Uh, hi, I'm Kenneth. Kenneth, how long have you been playing the trumpet? Uh, four years. Four years. What trumpet players do you admire? Uh, a lot, but recently I've been looking into uh, Wynton Marsalis, and I've just been listening to his classical music, his his jazz, and just everything. Uh, also, I like um, Marcus Printup. He's also uh, uh, he's in the JLCO band with Wynton Marsalis, and yeah, I just I like the way they sound and how they play, and just their just their personality in general outside of music. Beautiful. Okay, and now the final trumpet player. Your name? I'm Miranda. Miranda, why the trumpet? Um, well, my dad was a trumpet player, and I almost played the flute instead, but then I decided I'd rather play the trumpet. How many years on the trumpet? Um, since fifth grade, so like, I don't know, seven or something. Does it get easier? Uh, well, I mean, you're always trying to do new things, so I guess, no. <laughs> Honest answer. And on drums. I'm Nathan. Nathan. What's it like playing with a big band? 
I, it's definitely a different experience from, you know, anything else you'd play in. Uh, because you have to be able to both, like, play your parts and play with the band, but also in insert your own personality into the music, but without, like, messing with the style of the piece. So, yeah, it's, it's a challenge. How many years have you been playing? Since sixth grade, so how many years that is. You think you'll go on <laughs> and keep playing? Yeah, I think so. That's a good thing. Okay, and we go over to our guitarist. Your name, sir? My name's Eric. Eric, how long have you been playing? I've been playing for 10 years. Did you start out with jazz? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I was playing rock and roll like Led Zeppelin and Cream okay. and that kind of stuff. And how did you make the transition to jazz? Well, I don't know. It just... I, you know, I'm just looking for stuff to practice, and there's a lot of jazz to practice. <laughs> so, like, here I am. Yeah. And fun to play in a big band? Oh, it's the best. I Why? Like. Because th there's there's so many different musicians on the bandstand to interact with, and there's so much stuff you have to do in terms of, like, like listening to all the parts and making sure they all go together right and making sure you fit in and that you're respectful of everybody else with the way you play but it's, i like it great and our friend on the bass i'm dylan step up a little bit dylan get a little bit closer so we can hear you i'm dylan hi dylan <laughs> we got it that time how long on the bass uh, this is my second year playing your second year what inspired you at your, at your advanced age to pick up the bass Ah, uh, well, all my friends were playing music in my high school, so they told me to join jazz band, and I did. So I'm like, okay, I'll hang out with them. And then I got stuck with bass because no one else played it, and then I <laughs> realized that I liked it. <laughs> and uh, any exposure to jazz before this? No. What do you think of this music called jazz? I really like it. Why? I like, uh, well, I mean, it's just, it's fun to play with and listen to. And I like, you know, I mean, jazz is whatever genre of music you prefer if you don't listen to jazz you can find it in jazz somewhere cool thank you Dylan and also on guitar hi I'm JJ JJ why the guitar I picked up the guitar because my father was a professional guitar player all his life uh, and so it was kind of natural you know when I was two he came back from a, a visit a work visit and brought me an electric guitar a Fender Squire and so I just kind of started playing from there and how do you like playing in a big band Oh, I love it. It's uh, it's really very different. It's very simple, but uh, very complex at the same time. You only play one note uh, for every beat, and so it can be a little uh, uh, pedantic and trying to make sure that you're trying to play every note as precise as possible. But also, there's a lot of uh, openness to you know try new harmonies and things that interact well with the entire band, and you have to be attentive to what everyone else is playing to to do play your part well. Okay, let's go over here to our pianist. Hi, your name? Esme. Esme. How long have you been playing? About two and a half years. Wow. What inspired you to start playing? Well, my brother played jazz before me, and there was a piano at my house, and my grandma used to play, so it was convenient. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, playing in a big band, how do you feel about that? It's definitely a new experience, and it's challenging, but... It's fun because you get to interact with other people your age and older and younger. Now, speaking of interacting and our elders, you're working with Jimmy Heath these few days. What is it like working with a jazz master? Well, he's pretty great. He's, he's really fun to work with. He's very nice. He's inspiring. Beautiful. Okay. We're going to go to our sax section, a man who's also doubling on audio. Your name? Isaac. Isaac, what do you play? Saxophone. Which saxophone? Alto and tenor. Alto and tenor. Okay, how long have you been playing? Uh, I started playing alto when I was in fifth grade, and I started playing tenor this year. And uh, jazz, when did that come into your life? Um, after, I, I kind of started playing saxophone because I had to with my elementary school, and then my dad brought me here and kind of enrolled me, and after like a year, I started really liking jazz, so I stayed on. Well, what is it you like about it? It, for me, it's kind of, um, I don't know, playing jazz is one of the things that makes me really happy. And it's, it's nice to be able to sit down with a bunch of other people who care about this music and want to keep it alive. 
Absolutely. And now a man who recently has had to replace his saxophone case. Yeah. Your name, sir? Uh, ben. Ben, what happened last night with that case? Well, it's an old case and the zipper was broken and, the z and, and so both zippers were behind the thing so I couldn't open the case. So we needed the jaws of life, but I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Happy ending. And uh, why the tenor saxophone? Um, I mean, I was always um, checking out like Lester Young and uh, Coleman Hawkins and Sonny Rollins and those those guys. So it wasn't really much of a thought um, and train and, and everybody else. And it's just, I mean, there's such a wide spectrum of, of tenor players that there's there's anyone, you know, you can like anybody. So it's an easy it's an easy instrument to start on because there's so much information for you to take from immediately. So that was. That was the appeal for me. All right. I'm going to move over here, excuse me, to a man who's doubling, just played some incredible work on clarinet. Your name, sir? Alex. Alex? Yeah. Where are you from, Alex? I'm from Rio Rico. Rio Rico. Yeah. And uh, from a musical family, or what spurred your interest in music? Uh, well, like, there's actually, like, I started off with music, like, I used to love to sing when I was little, and I started off with the guitar, and then I joined band in eighth grade. My director was like, you're playing alto and clarinet. So I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I started playing then, and uh, my sophomore year, I joined the Tucson Jazz Institute, and I've worked my way up from there to the Ellington Big Band. Sounds like you practice a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good thing. And now the man who gets award as the best hat of the day. <laughs> and your name, sir? Uh, Simeon. Simeon, and that hat, is that an original creation or did you buy that at Goodwill Industries? <laughs> <laughs> I, I stole this from my little brother. You stole it from your little brother, yeah. okay. That's a good thing. And I see you're playing the alto saxophone. Do you play other saxophones as well? Um, I play the uh, soprano saxophone also in this band, and I also play tenor outside of this. Um, so you're a pretty serious saxophone player. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, jazz into your life, how did that happen? Um, well, I started out playing classical saxophone around fourth grade. And, um, and then I remember my saxophone teacher, who, uh, who was teaching me classical at the time, was also a jazz musician. And he just kind of threw me into the scene. And it was kind of cool and it was also kind of spooky at the same time. But. And then I got hooked into it after listening to it a lot. So. And who were the, some of the saxophone players that you listened to for inspiration? Uh, that one has to be Chris Potter, uh, Joshua Redman, um, Coleman Hawkins. This, this okay. Yeah. Name some serious players there. And now a man who likes to come to a rehearsal in bare feet. Your name, sir? <laughs> Zach. Zach. What do you play, Zach? I play tenor saxophone and alto saxophone. And how did you get started in music? Uh, well, my grandma is a piano player, and she was like a child prodigy when she was real small. And so she, the music has always been part of my life, so I just kind of got involved in it in fourth grade or whenever. It's third grade, I think, recorder. And what is it, <laughs> what is it you like about playing in a big band? Uh, well, I really like, the, like playing in a section, uh, and it offers a section clearly and I just really like playing the music in a section. That's a beautiful thing. And now uh, one of the heavier instruments in jazz, the baritone saxophone. Are you glad you're not in a marching band? Um, <laughs> well, I am. I just don't march this because okay. that's not a good idea. And what is your name, sir? I'm Kevin. Kevin, how long have you been playing the baritone? Um, for five years. Five years. Why the baritone? Um, well, at first it was just because uh, my middle school band director was like, uh, there's too many altos, you have to not play that. And so I, play, I played not that. Um, <laughs> but then later as I started playing it more, uh, specifically in jazz, a lot of people kind of um, overlooked the fact that the Barry was able to sound like not just loud or low, but also like it it be it, it it has to it's able to sound really beautiful at times and that's really apparent with um some players like Joe Temperley or Jerry Mulligan and um that's like that's what inspires me to continue playing the berry and yeah I try to 
the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. I like your listening. Okay, and uh, another baritone sax player. Your name? I'm Kayla. Kayla, why the baritone for you? It's uh, I hate to be uh, make generalizations, but only a few women who play the baritone, like Claire Daly and a few others. Why the baritone? Um, it was kind of the same reason as him, and he went to my middle school, and he graduated, and then all my friends were in jazz band, and I was kind of jealous because I didn't have anything to do. I was just in concert band. So, I don't know, I kind of took this instrument up because it was like the one spot, but I don't know. I just found it to be really fun, and I, and it's fine that you made that generalization because I kind of like the fact that I took up an instrument that not many girls play and that can play like well, you know? So, I just enjoy, I don't know, defying people's standards. Beautiful. And what is it like to play in a sax section with all these goofy guys? Oh, dude, I love it. I just, I love them so much. But I don't know, it's really fun because they're all really talented and different in their own way, and I really learn something different from each one of them. Beautiful. Now we're going to go over to the trombone section. I see what looks to be a bass trombone there. That it is. Your name, sir? <laughs> I'm Devin. Devin, why the bass trombone instead of the regular trombone? Well, I play both of them. I play bass trombone mostly because our bass trombonist in the band quit, and so I was the only kid stupid enough to pick it up. <laughs> but I really do love the bass trombone. It has such a beautiful and almost like classical, very dark sound to it. And so it gets such a unique... It's one of the few instruments that I find that you can always fill up a room with sound when you play it. Music is an important part of your life? Yeah, I would, yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, uh, playing in a big band, what is that like? It, it's, it's, it's almost paradoxical in a sense, because you really do have to give up your, you have to give up yourself. You have to play the articulations that your lead player is playing. You have to be in tune with the piano. You have to be in time with the drums. But at the same time, whenever you play big band music, it's a complete reflection of how you're feeling at the time. I mean, when Duke Ellington wrote a part, he didn't write it for third trombone. He wrote it for Juan Teasel. And so it really becomes just not only an expression of how everyone's feeling at the time, but how you feel at the time. And so it, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever felt in my life, is being part of a whole, but uniquely myself. That's a wonderful definition. Also on trombone, your name, sir? I'm Douglas. Douglas, how long have you been playing? This is my sixth year playing trombone. Now, some people say the trombone is impossible, is it? Oh, it's quite near impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and why did you decide on this difficult challenge of an instrument? Um, I just found that everyone seemed to like to play the trumpet more. And I saw the trombone, and I thought it was unique and challenging, and I like a challenge. So that's why I chose the trombone. And uh, did you know about jazz before this group? I actually didn't. I had a grandfather who used to play saxophone, and he played all sorts of different styles, mostly Spanish music. But from watching him, I really like found an interest in instrumental music, and I decided to pursue it. Beautiful. And another gentleman who's wearing that Ellington T-shirt. Why do you wear that T-shirt? Well, th this is the shirt from two years ago at the Essential Ellington competition, and I mean the main reason I wear it is because it's a great competition and a great program in general, and because I love jazz. All right, and your name? Jared. Jared, how long have you been playing the trombone? Uh, seven or eight years, since, since the summer before fifth grade, actually. Well, that's an early age to start. Why did you begin? So we, we were all required to either be in band or orchestra in fifth grade. Everybody in my elementary school played violin in fourth grade, and then we could switch to band in fifth grade if we wanted to. So I wanted to get an early jump on everybody else, so I started the summer before fifth grade. And what trombonist do you listen to for inspiration? Uh, there's a lot. Right now I've been listening to a lot of uh, uh, Conrad Herwig, Al, Al Gray's great. Uh, I just heard Steve Davis play a little bit in New York, which was awesome. Um, I'm JJ. Beautiful. You're a serious listener. Let me jump over here. And finally, our last little mini interview. Your name, sir? Uh, I'm Richie. Richie, how long on the trombone? Seven years. Seven years. How did you get involved with the Tucson Jazz Institute? Uh, a couple of years ago, there was, there was some graduates from my high school. I actually live by the clarinet player. And 
they were telling us that we should come to TJI if we want to get better at jazz. So I came one day and I was hooked. And what is it you like about working with the Ellington Band and being at the Institute? Well, working with the Ellington Band, this is like a big family. I mean, in my school band, it's sort of like you, you won't get to know anyone as well as you'll get to know someone here. And with the Institute, it gives me something to do on the weekends. It gives me a reason to keep playing music. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, we're going to jump over here. And uh, the reason that we're here today is for a session and a rehearsal with a jazz master named James Edward Heath. Hello, Mr. Heath. Okay, how are you, uh, Brett? I'm good. And what is it like playing with a group of high school kids, considering you've played with everyone from John Coltrane to Dizzy Gillespie? What is it like, and what do you get from playing with high school kids? I get a lot of pleasure out of it, because it's about the continuum of the music that I loved when I was their age. Yeah. And I still love it at my age. And for those who don't know, how old might you be? I'm 89, about to be 90 years old in October. 90, 90 years old. Uh, have, have big bands changed? You came up in the era of big bands, and here we are 80-some-odd years later with the Ellington Band. How have big bands changed over your lifetime? Well, you know, the transportation problem came along, and that stopped the bands, the big bands, not the music. It's still liked when it's heard. But the fact that they couldn't travel as much as they used to. We used to travel on the highway. We had buses, you know, and we'd travel that way. And uh, now you got to get on the airplane to go everywhere, and it's too expensive. So the big bands kind of went out of vogue. Well, that's a shame. Well, there's some wonderful music being played today. And now I'm going to turn it over to Doug, who's going to uh, conduct this rehearsal. You're, take it away, Doug. Uh, I'm going to have the rhythm section do A-Train with Jimmy. Who, who would like to play on that? Okay, we got one, two, three, four, five. Why don't you guys move towards the center of the room? Uh, Don't worry about it. You can do whatever you want. Great. So we know who he's working with. Do you want to record this, Doug? Yeah, it might be cool to have. They're basically taking the sound from the camera. So we don't need it. Yeah, don't need it. Okay, we've got some solo order established here. Who's she got the first solo, and we'll figure it out. After that. Okay, you're going to take a couple chords or so? Yeah. Okay. What do you want? Two or three choruses at the most. Okay. Right? Several of them want to play choruses. And, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, whoever you point to, they'll play a chorus. Or you got whatever. it. I'm over it. Okay, but we need the intro. You do the intro. And she knows the intro. Tempo. Yeah. One. Two, one, two, three, four. Thank <laughs> you. 
Street or moving uptown? You want to try to take some moving uptown? Are we ready for that? Yes or no? Okay. So, what, what have you learned about chops today? Too slow, not too fast. Mm -hmm. we, I think we usually do like 128 ish. Zach, you getting a metronome? You want a metronome? Yeah, I have. Yeah, let's get. Because we're going to take a couple takes of it. What is that? 128. Okay. Good. It's fast. It's going to slow down. It feels a little fast to me. Yeah, it feels a little bit fast. Take the 126. I think we did it 124. We might have. That's still 
feels better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remember what happens is take a, a full take. Full don't take. Drive. <coughs> don't keep the tempo. Not a matter of don't drive. You want to state it positively. <laughs> keep the tempo. Don't drag. <laughs> <laughs> Something's broken? Yeah, I'll fix it really quick. It just happens sometimes. That's it. That was it. Okay. How much did you get paid for that? Uh, and how much you give me? <laughs> give me a slice of pizza. Are we having pizza again? Are we having pizza again? At one o'clock. Hold on, we're, we're still running. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm very hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry, Jerry. I'm hungry, Jerry. You're playing Loving Too Much. Now, is that a problem with the cable, or is that a problem with, uh... It's a snake. Snake, okay. It's not Star Wars. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, no. It's good. 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 Okay, guys. Sit up. Take a deep breath. Get ready. Wiggle your shoulders around a little bit. Do some head rolls. Come on, Kenneth. Get some blood back into your body here. You got to sound like we've been playing all day long, and this is going to be the best take ever. Right? What did, what did, what did Jimmy call us yesterday? One take band. Did he call us that? Yeah, he did. We did, uh, what tune did he think we did in one take? Time and place. And may, that might be the take we take. He didn't even want to take that second one. Well, he felt we were done. We were. I thought it was hey, He's a lot more experienced than I am. Oh, no. Ready?
Okay. Uh, the most obvious thing that I'm hearing are crack notes in the brass section. Um, the feel was good, I thought. Tempo stayed pretty consistent. Solos were all good. Um, anybody not happy with their solo? Okay. What is it? Notes or feel? I just didn't like. I, I don't know. My fingers like slip. Like the. I don't know. They weren't. They yes, weren't like completely accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's why you, it sounded like you played a different solo this time. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> okay, Miranda, how are you? It was all right. Okay. Uh, do you want to go and can we take another take? Yes or no? Um, you know, we're going to break in, in about 12 minutes anyway. So if you take another take of this. Uh, I mean, we, we could, yeah. Okay. Your chops all right? Yeah. Okay. I just I needed a little bit of a break. No, it's um, the Christopher Columbus. I don't know why, but my I just I don't know. It's a blow. Chops. Do you feel sluggish? What is it? Yeah, like after every time I play Christopher Columbus, my my chops just they I don't know. It's okay. just that yeah, song, know. that and Old Man Blues, but Old Man That'd Blues. That would be good to know that. Huh? That would be good to know that. I didn't know that. They did that to your chops. That yeah, it's it's all right. It's, it's all good. Okay. Uh, do we need a tune? Yeah. I think so. Saxes go first. Can you go pee really quick? Yeah. Go for the high one? Yeah. Yeah. We did another movement of town. Caleb. Tasks done. Whoa. Thank you. Caleb. Make this be the take, guys. Give me that metronome marking again. Did you play the first note? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
That's pretty tech. Very hard press feed it. It's great. Maybe a solo could be a little bit on it. Brass is as good as I think you play. I cracked one note. One note. <laughs> what did Jimmy say about one no, note? I know. Was there a good feel on that or not? Yeah. Yeah, there was a good feel. And we cracked one note. Are we going to throw that tape absolutely. away? No. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't hear. I didn't hear many cracking notes in the trumpets at all. Are you forgetting like the harmonic structure? One note. Yeah. What? Oh, oh yeah, no, mine. I, I can't hear it. Yeah, we, well, we can. Yeah, put it on, turn it around, uh, or do you want to go out there? We need to hear it. Okay. Thank you, Isaac. No, I, I thought that was good, guys. My note wasn't even one of the ones in the run. Mine wasn't that bad. Hi, this is Brett Premack, and I want to thank you for joining us today for this uh, rehearsal recording session with the uh, Tucson Institute of Jazz Ellington Band, conducted by Doug Tideback with special guest Jimmy Heath. As you can see from this broadcast, there's some very talented young people doing some really exciting things here at the Tucson Jazz Institute. We want to thank the Institute and Doug Tideback and his associates, Scott Black and Bryce Winston, along with Yvonne Irvin and everyone who's worked hard to make this possible. And especially our warmest thanks to one of the great musicians in jazz, my friend, Jimmy Heath. Thank you.